For provocative stuff that I think you should know, check out the Justin Hall Show! Here's some provocative people making games from the Game Developers Conference and Lost Levels, March 2014. Video games represent the furthest evolution of human communications and storytelling. Rules and fantasy overlay our experiences as we participate in playful experiments run by game developers. Each year, many of these developers converge on San Francisco for the Game Developers Conference. I've been having conversations at the GDC for over a decade. It's a great chance to be surrounded by playful people and experimental human interactions. Uh, yep, we're running. There you go. And go. Hi, I'm Justin Hall. I'm standing here with some 3D glasses and some 3D headphones wow. on for a virtual chateau experience on some European looking hill. I was reeling about to test my perception, responding to this astonishing and slightly nauseating virtual reality setup. It's a good thing I can't go over this wall, because I'd probably lose <laughs> my shit if I had to fall rapidly in space. This year at the Game Developers Conference, there were plenty of virtual reality rigs on display. A few booths even showed off some full body involvement. Video games have great potential to bring us into new worlds. I'm fascinated to see what empowered creators choose to make out of this rich medium. Who doesn't want to be a goat? That's like the question you have to ask yourself, and I think we all know. So, yeah, it's a pretty huge audience, and I think we'll see way more goat games in the future. So, where are we? We are, well, so right now, we are at, in the Yerba Buena Gardens, outside of GDC, the Game Developers Conference. We're standing in the middle, or maybe the end, of Lost Levels, which is a free unconference. So GDC, tickets are like hundreds to thousands of dollars. The goal of Lost Levels is to be as radically inclusive as possible. People who are here today are not here to talk about like million dollar budgets and triple A studios. The people who are here are here to talk about making zines and making music and making little games with their friends and being creative. Corporate games are not, I think, what a lot of people want, but they're what we settle for a lot of the time. And so I, I think I see all around me Spaces like this springing up, people who want video games and games in general to be different than that. Anna Anthropy is a writer, historian, and game designer who works to promote the creation of individual and community video games. I'm working on a book called ZZT, which is the name of a game-making tool from 1991. And the book is really about the people who worked with this tool, who clung to this tool and built communities around it, and what those communities look like, and what those games look like, and how, and how different they were at the time from like a lot of what we think of video games as looking like. My book, Rise of the Video Games Easters, is about people making personal games, and this book is about people who are making personal games in 1991. It's just this, like, this piece of the history of DIY video game creation. I love Anna Anthropy's participatory ethic because it means we'll hear more voices in electronic entertainment. More voices means more variety and also more controversy as our fellow humans explore the potential for video games to express their personal or political views. My name is Paolo Pedercini. I work as Mall Industria. I made uh, a lot of several games dealing with labor issues and dealing with production processes. That's kind of like a bit of my obsession, like uh, where are these things we have around coming from, what's their story behind, because I think games can really be good at that, essentially, at connecting the dots, at, at uh, putting together what uh, globalized transnational capitalism sort of separates. Uh, in 2000. I made this uh, fairly popular game called the McDonald's video game in which you are uh, managing the whole process of the, McDon the McDonald's corporation. I made another one about the oil industry and the politics. And uh, I kind of realized that as a digital producer, as a game developer, I was not immune to this kind of like industrial processes. Yeah, of course, 
we game designers, we like to think of ourselves as uh, kind of like a material worker. Like we, we deal with language, with images, we rule systems, algorithm and code. But actually with everything we do, there is, there is always a kind of a ma very material layer that in the case of, you know, phones and, uh, and uh, gadgets and smartphones is uh, actually quite problematic. Paolo made a game called Phone Story, which asks users to play with the social and environmental costs of owning a smartphone. So I kind of made a game about like not wanting to make a game about about uh, on uh, on iOS or uh, on smartphones. Yeah. Apple ended up banning Paolo's game Phone Story from their App Store shortly after it was released. Later that day, I met an artist making video games that looked to me like they might promote empathy. Hi, my name's Aria. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I've made seven games with my partner Michael Samin as Tale of Tales. Each one of our things are different. We've made a multiplayer game called The Endless Forest where you play a deer. We've made a simulator of being an old woman in a graveyard on her last day of life. We've made a game about six red riding hoods who meet their wolves in forests. We've made a game where you are the spirit of a saint with one night left on earth. We've made a game where you have to have sex with your tablet computer. I asked her how they decided to make art games about the human experience. Why? We chose this, you know, we chose to make interactive artwork or at some point I knew I was going to make artwork with computers. It just turned out that there was this whole thing called video games that was possible for me to make on my own or with small teams. I'm workaholic. Michael's a workaholic. We just enjoy making things. And we want people to actually see them, you know, it's about let's make artwork for people that they can experience in their homes even, that there's nothing between us and them, you know, we're all playing it on the same hardware, we're all have potentially a similar experience, but yet it's colored by everyone's life and the way their own head works and it's sort of always a collaboration between us as makers and them as players, it's like audience becomes performer or something. Yeah, I don't know, I really enjoy the medium for that. You know. Aurea and Michael's latest project, Luxuria Superbia, won an award at the GDC this year. I asked her to describe the common thread in all these things they've made. The common thread is that we want people to, to make things that enhance people's lives and don't replace them, so we don't like to make addictive games, for example. We like to make games that are more like little poems in people's lives, and you might remember just a little bit of it, you know, and, and one day, you know, it's in your head, or, you know, it, and it sort of somehow enhances your life. Hi. What's your name? I'm Aki. And uh, what do you make? I make games. Yeah, uh, video games, I mean. So tell me about your video games. Uh, my video games? Uh, okay, well, what do you want to know? Like... Mahdi Barami is 21 years old. Originally from Iran, now he's studying game development in the Netherlands. Mahdi is an independent game developer, and for the last five years he's been submitting his games to the Experimental Gameplay Workshop at the GDC. 2014 was the first year that the U.S. Department of Homeland Security allowed Mahdi to come to San Francisco to present his work. At the Experimental Gameplay Workshop on the last day of the GDC, he showed slides of art and architecture from his hometown Isfahan, and then showed us how his local culture inspired his software creations. Mahdi demonstrated his game Engare that merges math, Islamic art, and Islamic music. I believe any artist's highest calling might be to foster cultural connections to reduce violence. With Iran and the United States so distant these days, I feel that Mahdi's games achieve a sort of elegant, poignant ambassadorship. People like you support The Justin Hall Show on Patreon. Visit 
patreon.com slash justin.